Can I, well, if I can jump in, some of the critics of those kinds of policies say that the best thing about GST is that it is um, it's very simple in its application. Do you, so would you disagree with them when they say that um, policies around GST of certain types of foods but not other types of foods would be both hard to implement and expensive to implement? I, I think that's total nonsense. Hey, we've got the most complex tax laws in the world, but we still manage to get the, those um, tax back, you know, get people paying tax, mostly. But so why is it so great to have a simple um, GST system? There are other countries in the world that are able to run these so-called complicated um, GST systems where they can take um, different levels of tax on different um, items. So Australia has one of those, um, South Africa, you know, countries all around the world are already running it. If they can do that, why can't we? We're no dumber than any Aussie. So why is your policy better than Labor's policy? Um, which, because this is just fresh fruit and vegetables, isn't it? Yeah, and, and like I say, that is great. But, um, you know, $2 a week is, is going to make some difference. But if you take it off all food, it actually means that more people are going to be buying more healthy food. Uh, and that's what we want to encourage. It's not just about uh, making food affordable, it's also about encouraging people to eat healthily. Okay. Normally we ask the campaigning uh, politicians some questions about social issues. Students are quite interested in things like the alcohol purchase age. Well, what's your view Is it, and what's the Māori Party view? Uh, we want to see um, a rise in the, in the age um, and we went with the uh, national government's two step one. Uh, personally I'd like to see it rise, raise. Yep. Raised? Raised? Yep. Raised. Raised. Yep. Risen? Yeah. <laughs> um, go up. Yeah. But, um, you know, we've just... 25? It's, it's crazy. What, what age? Fact, what age do you think 25 would be fantastic. <laughs> um, I mean, some students here might not be so impressed with, with yeah, that because, um, you know, they, they enjoy a drink on the weekends. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, if it was 25, then Zach wouldn't be having the problems that he's having at the moment because he's, I understand he's still 22. But, you know, the, the problem is that we do have this drinking culture in New Zealand and we've never learnt to deal with it. And everybody just says, oh, it's our drinking culture and leaves it at that. Right. It's not good enough. We do need to be um, making sure that people are not drawn into that and at an early age. They do need to be looking at why we're doing that and why they um, have to go drinking in order to have fun or why when they get together socially, drink has to be involved. In fact, uh, there is a lot of evidence showing that um, people start early because of that very thinking, you know, we've got to have a drink. Um, I think that we actually need to be um, educating our young people that it is not necessary to drink to have fun. Okay, and presumably you'd have the same uh, approach, well not the same approach to drug reform, but you wouldn't be in favour of any liberalisation of the drug laws? Personally, no. No, I'm not in favour of, of anything. Um, alcohol, tobacco, any sort of drugs, they need to be um, very heavily regulated uh, and, and make sure that people um, are able to have fun without these, these sorts of things, that they're able to deal with their lives basically okay. without these crutches. Okay. Now, what about gay marriage? Some people are pushing for the civil union um, element in our law to be extended just so anyone can get married regardless of their sexuality. What do you think? Oh, sorry, I, I, I thought that the civil union actually took care of that. Um, am I wrong? In well, some people would argue that it's a halfway measure and that um, gay and lesbian people still don't have full equality. Um, okay. What do you think with their argument that they, anyone should marry? Uh, if people are in a committed relationship, they should be able to show that commitment legally. Right, so it sounds like you would vote if someone introduced a private member's bill in favour of... I would of... certainly look at it and see what uh, it is offering to the people that uh, enter society. Right. But yeah, if, if you're in a committed relationship, and this is what I'm telling my daughter at the moment, you're in a committed relationship, you've been in this relationship for seven or more years yeah. now, isn't it time to show that commitment with, with the piece of paper? Oh, okay, so yeah. um, so marriage is quite an important institution yes. um, to you. Yes, it is. I, I guess I'm interested in another element um, relating to all of this. 
you describe yourself as someone of, of religious faith. Mm -hmm. So do you think these things um, uh, influence the way that you see things like um, alcohol and drugs and marriage, these social issues? Yeah, certainly it does, particularly given the religion that I am, because of course um, uh, we, in my religion we do not drink or smoke or take drugs or, okay. or anything of, of that nature. And um, that's my personal choice as, um, as well. But it's also, when you look around, at what's happening in, within our families, what's happening within society, yeah. that so much of it can be brought back to these yeah. social yeah. evils. Um, that, and I think that the people that are making money off our misery really need to be shown sharply that they cannot carry on this way. So um, I'm very uh, against all of the um, manufacture, marketing, uh, producing of these booze, cigarettes, all of that, that we need to be showing the people that are making money that we won't be um, pandering to the right. greed anymore. Okay. So looking at the kind of ideology and the, you know, the beliefs of politicians, um, trying to understand you know, where people sit, how would you describe your personal or political ideology? Is there, or is it is there uh, a, a way to describe that? You know, um, I, you know, some actually, people say they're left wing, some people say they're right wing, yeah. some people say they're um, conservative, liberal. Do any yeah. of those things resonate with you? or Not particularly. Or, I'm, I'm, or, or, I'm not a political scientist. So no. I, 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 when I, I sit down and analyse my views, I'm, I, I'm, I'm some of them left leaning, some of them, right. I guess, right leaning, some very centre. So in some ways, pragmatic? You'd see yourself? Very, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and what I'm looking at basically is, is to make sure that. Um, our whānau and our communities, our society, yeah. actually are able to progress uh, in a way that is good for them. Uh, and it may not necessarily be good for the, um, the corporation sitting in Seattle, Washington. Sure. Yeah. So the, the fact that you kind of have an ethnic orientation in that regard, does that mean you're... Would, would Māori nationalism be the sort of ideology that sort of underpins a lot of your... Um, your politics? Uh, I guess a lot of it because I am Māori. Yeah. Um, it's it's hard to separate out the fact that I'm Māori from my politics. Mm. Um, and but so not, not not all Māori politicians would think like that. Um, there'll be some I don't know, Tohinere say, mm. or um, wh whoever else wouldn't necessarily see it like that, would they? Yeah, and and that's why I'm I'm in the Māori Party yeah. because this is a party that recognises that Māori do that many Māori do identify not only um, ethnically but through their whakapapa with and, and their um, leaning towards kaupapa that this is what they want to be, the way they want to be living their lives, the way they want to bring their families up in, in a kaupapa Māori way and so this party is helping us to do that. Okay. So assuming you do win Te Taitonga this election and you oh, yeah. increase your majority to beyond a thousand, what's your, your future? Would, would you like to be a, a cabinet or a minister in, in government? Uh, it's certainly ministers that are able to push those decisions, mm. push the policies. And so I have a lot of policies that mm. um, I would like to push. So what, so, what sort of areas, what oh, sort of portfolios particularly interest you? Justice, of course. Yeah. I've, I've come from a, a legal background. Yeah. I've worked in the community law centres for um, many years. Um, of course, I'd love to see justice issues, treaty issues, um, progressed um, Māori land issues. So a lot of those sorts of things, but also environmental issues, very close to my heart. So I'd want to be um, involved in those sorts of things. Community so and voluntary sector, because um, of the again, the background that I've had, very interested in those issues. So there's a whole lot of different issues that, that I'd love to have um, more than an input into. Sure. And in terms of, I guess, leadership, there must be a question within your party at the moment about succession and who eventually is going to replace uh, Tariana Turi and Peter Sharples. Um, you know, what's your feeling? Could you, you know, step into their shoes? Or if, do you think? Yeah, if the party uh, sees that I am leadership material, I'd certainly uh, because be Because they're obviously interested. going, so yeah. someone's going to have to take yeah. over. But um, yeah, if, if they see that I'm leadership material, I'd certainly be interested in, in um, seeing where that takes me. 
Can I, can I just pick up on that? That's an, um, an interesting way of answering the question, which is a lot different to what a lot of other parties and, can, and MPs, would a way they would answer when they are asked about their leadership ambitions. You take someone like David Cunliffe, for instance, when he was on Vote Chat, he was asked, um, would he ever like to be um, Prime Minister one day? And he said, who would wish that on a dog? Um, but whereas you're, you seem to be a little bit more open and accepting that these leadership it's quite refreshing. sort of yeah. issues um, happen, what do you think of other parties, um, probably more interested in people like Labour, like Shane Jones and David Parker and Sharon, and all the rumours going around about their leadership, whereas they, they sort of deflect the whole thing um, away and assume that Phil Goff is perhaps going to be there for eternity? Well, you know, you, you do have to um, be open and transparent. Uh, I've got no agendas, no hidden agendas, and so I don't have to deflect questions. Um, and, and, and that is one of the things, again, about the Māori Party, is that we don't do agendas. Uh, we are very open about what we want to achieve and where we want to be going and, and how we're going to do it. Uh, but, I mean, we've got to get through the election first. Um, I'm not saying that um, I may necessarily be the best person. I would want to have a look around myself and see if, if I am the best person. But if I think so and if the party thinks so, then I'm happy to step up and do that. OK, well, since we've talked about, James has raised the issue of the future of the Labour Party. Who do, who do you think it's going to be after Goff? After Goff? I'd love to see it be Shane. Yeah? You... He is a really uh, able person, a really intelligent man, and he is a great leader. He's showing it all of his public life. Um, he has made one stumble, but he dealt with it very well. OK, so in this contest, you are... But of course, uh, I'm not a, a, a course, Labour but, Party but member. But still, so. you have an insight being in Parliament and um, you know, um, being within this milieu to be able to um, give us yeah, some mm. ideas. So I, so in the Titai Tonga electorate, obviously, things aren't going... You're not too pally with uh, Reno. Um, <laughs> but um, what about... So Shane Jones, there are people in the Labour Party, Murray Caucus, if you like, that you could work well with. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Over the three years, we have worked very well with various issues. Um, you know, the um, thing that you see on TV about us all bagging each other, that yeah. doesn't always... That's not what it's like 24-7. We are able to work together on a heck of a lot of issues. And, in fact, Materia and I are the co-chairs of a cross-party group on child poverty. And we have um, managed to actually get the... Māori Affairs Select Committee to agree to undertake a, an inquiry into the well-being of Māori children. And that's by working together, the Greens, the Māoris and um, Labour Party um, MPs working together to get that through. There are a whole lot of other different cross-party groups in Parliament where that happens, where we are able to work together. i um, like to see it um, expand so that we can get National Party members onto that group and in fact there are a, a, a lot of National Party MPs who do want to be part of that group but unfortunately it seems that they've been whipped so that they cannot join it. Uh, we hope that that will change next term.